All good. All good. Very good. Bahut badhiya. With, with a new look of Manu ji. <laughs> no, this is what we called uh, COVID look. Arindam sir, Arindam sir, how you are doing? Good, good, good. Much better. Always, always uh, with a smile and happy face, right? <laughs> That's under our control, so that's what you can do. <laughs> that's the only thing which I actually left under our control. <laughs> yeah, Shubham. Uh, Shubham. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, we are we are being streamed live. Okay. Yes. So, are we going to get an audience to be let in also? Uh, they will be watching through YouTube live or on our website. on web website so we we people will be here only and uh, these people will watch so how you are going to take the questions from audience but through youtube live chat okay fine fine that's okay that's fine so we can start right now sir yeah perfect i think we can go ahead we can start good evening to all i am ujjal tyagi and on behalf of isa india i do hereby welcome the distinguished speakers delegates academicians and students who are present here for the virtual expert talk titled post pandemic opportunities and challenges for engineers co organized by asdc automotive skills development council and powered by tech imperial The COVID-19 pandemic has created a challenging condition in every sector, alternatively giving different ways to explore new opportunities. It is a need to bring a refreshing boost to the thinking as there is a lot of opportunities with new challenges awaiting after the pandemic. Now this is the time to make ourselves prepare for the new challenges with new approach to convert the shortcomings into opportunities. Today through this virtual expert talk we will be discussing about these challenges for engineers. and how to convert them into opportunity as india's biggest e mobility research and development skill based education platform we isa india are motivating engineers to work on new and renewable sources of energy various new technologies in the field of electric and hybrid vehicles isa india is creating more opportunities for students providing skill based education we are encouraging millions of indian youths to make drive their dreams Now let's have a look over our initiative to promote the green energy and skilled education through a video. Audio. As per the World Health Organization, the air pollution is the fifth largest killer in India, with about 2 million deaths per year. In the last few years, we have seen various news reports and article on air quality of India getting worse day by day. According to survey by Ministry of Earth Sciences, it has been found that vehicles are the major sources of pollution. Thus, it get clear that zero emission vehicle and renewable sources of energy are the future. The industry and the government has already started joint efforts in this direction for a clean future. The electric vehicle has been coming into the market for over a decade now and by each year they are able to attract more customers. However, the place is still slow. To make this possible at the ground level, we need skilled workforce and personals who can work on this technology and can contribute to this dream of pollution free India and make a healthy future for the generations to come. Imperial Society of Innovative Engineers have been working for last 8 years on different fronts to solve this skill gap. We have been implementing skill based learning system. This is majorly done in two forms: engineering challenges and skill development program. Under engineering challenges, we organize various challenge based events where the students are provided with problem statements such as building electric, hybrid or solar power vehicle. In this they apply their academic knowledge in order to build a vehicle and compete with each other and show their mentor. 
they get an insight into pseudo elastic environment in term of fabrication of parts and components team work and efficient work strategy under skill development program we are providing educational solution to the institutions and individuals the goal is to use our skill based learning model in order to bridge the skill gap between industry and the graduate engineers for institutions we have numerous different solutions such as center of excellence collaborative technical program faculty development program and student development program these solution have been designed in order to enhance the learning experience of the student in the institute and skill them as per the industry standards if you are a professional looking for a job change a graduate engineer looking to land the job in ev industry or an entrepreneur looking to make an impact on the market we have automotive skill development certified courses ready as per your interest from the basic of electric vehicle to the depth of power train selection battery and battery management system we have it all as of today more than 2.4 lakh student have been benefited from our courses working in association with automotive skill development cell and society of manufacturers of electric vehicle we are endorsed by several other government and private agencies such as ministry of new and renewable energy niti aayog automotive research association of india earth day network extra working in the same direction our team at imperial society of innovative engineers is committed to work in the direction of skilling india towards a cleaner and a greener future for the generations to come join us and be a part of the change as a part of e mobility revolution on 19th april 2021 we launched the asia's biggest electric solo vehicle championship esvc 3000 in presence of shri arjun ram meghwal minister of state heavy industries and public enterprises and various guests from arai different automotive oems academicians and media we will give you a pictorial view through an event video of esvc 3000 In 2013 we at Imperial Society of Innovative Engineers India's biggest e-mobility platform came up with a solar vehicle challenge providing platform to numerous passionate and innovative minds across the nation the very first season show a really good response where 50 plus multidisciplinary teams from 9 plus states participated in this day showcase their skills and abilities to, to design and manufacture a solar vehicle project management and team coordination In the last 8 years we have had participation from 24 states in India and also from neighboring country of Bangladesh 500 plus team have been a part of this revolutionary event bringing various innovations in order to harness the solar energy and to increase the performance of the solar vehicle Inspired by their participation and enthusiasm of students team the rules and regulation are updated year on year to push them to build a more efficient vehicle We have included several dynamic and static rounds like paint test, hill climb test, solar test, etc., to simulate the real-world problems on track. Despite of what we put in front of them, the team have always surpassed our expectations and taken on the challenge. Seeing their progress on track, we have decided to notch it up, to take this vehicle out of the track and to the real world, subjecting them to more practical scenarios. Hence, ESVC 3000. This would be a rally challenge for these solo vehicles. Whereas we have aimed to do a trip of 3000 km from Chandigarh to Bengaluru by 2026. Currently in this season, teams will be covering up to Pune in time period of 10 days. The route has been marked with 10 overnight stay points and 55 checkpoints. The teams will cover a distance of about 180 to 250 km in a day, traveling between the overnight stay points. These overnight stay points will be having 5 checkpoints positioned in between at the difference of 50 km each. The teams will be accompanied by two cars, one in the front and one at the rear. These vehicles will be having a mandatory established radio communication between them to maintain proper synchronization and for the driver to be able to update the teams on the situation. Escort vehicle will be consist of safety equipments and kits. It will act as an emergency rescue vehicle in case of any accident. This vehicle also act as navigator for the team and one person from organizing team will be present in the vehicle as observer. Team vehicle will consist of team members trailing the car and basic equipment which can be used to repair the car in case of emergency. Checkpoints will be there for the team to take a maximum of 30 minutes break and get their vehicle inspection done. These checkpoints will be positioned at places with high inflow of the public to get maximum reach. It can be a popular restaurant or an institute. 
Billboards will be placed before and after the checkpoint for direction. At the checkpoint, a gate arc will be there to direct the vehicle and public towards the event venue. The local leaders will be invited to encourage the teams and help create awareness and educate the people. Apart from technical inspection, this area will also consist of activity zones for promotions by our sponsor and create awareness among the population present. Overnight stay point will be the point where the team will have to reach at the end of the day. These points will be near to highway but within some major cities and towns on the way. These points will have a dedicated parking area for all the teams and vehicles to park together creating a beautiful spectacle. Each overnight point will have some kind of entertainment activity arranged where local minister, magistrate, gadgeted officials, delegate from industry, our sponsor and media will be invited to attend among with the people from city and nearby regions. This can really help spread the awareness about electric vehicle and renewable energy. The venue will also have various points of attraction for the locals in order to gain their attention. The teams will be provided access to hot pit where they can perform repairs on the vehicle on the permission of technical inspector and with the compliance of the rule book. The team will also have opportunity to charge their battery packs. They will be provided with an option of charging station at the venue. The overnight stay point will also act as the starting point for the next day trip. Early morning the vehicles will be lined up after technical inspection to check the compliance of changes done. The flag of event will also be conducted in presence of minister or local leaders and our sponsor, followed by press conference for the same. At the end of 10th day, the team will have reached the destination of ARAI Chakan. In this duration, this rally will cross 10 plus cities, 60 plus towns and 500 plus villages creating impact on over 7 crore people spreading the message. The outcome of this rally will be promote and educate general public for e-mobility, promote renewable energy, real-time innovations, improving solar technology, minimizing skill gap, promote entrepreneurship, skilled workforce for auto industries. Join us in this country rally and create a difference. Now I would like to ask Mr. Vinod Gupta, Founder and President, ISI India, to address the speakers and attendees. Good evening everyone. Uh, uh, on behalf of Imperial Society of Innovative Engineers and ASTC, I would like to invite each and everyone present here, the delegates from the industry and academia participants from different industries, academic institutes, various startups, and so on. And I would like to also share one of the information. This event is going to attend by 3,000 plus students from 175 engineering institutes and universities through our YouTube channel and our e-learning platform that is isindia.com. Apart from students, various academicians from different institutes and universities are attending and industry professionals are also attending. Actually, this is tough time for each and everyone, especially for our education sector. There is different kind of questions arising in their minds like what will be the career opportunities how they can overcome even though industry always demand for the people who have some kind of different uh uh you know uh, industry oriented skills and when we have these practical uh, physical classes on the time we have many kind of labs, we have many kind of projects that could be done uh, through hands-on practice. So these are the things, those are not happening right now in this pandemic situation. And we as a leading platform in education, skill-based education for engineers, we thought we should come up with some plan, we, we should come up with some kind of program where industry 
leaders, academicians can motivate and guide our student fraternity. So here we are today. We are conducting this program. So I hope this program will be very fruitful to all of us. And my best wishes to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, so I thank you very much for those wonderful warm words to welcome me uh, to the session here today. And it really is my great pleasure to be here and send from Germany the warmest greetings to India and wishing you from the bottom of my heart all the best. And I hope I find you as well as possible in those difficult circumstances right now. So, um, yeah, um, like said before, um, I'm belonging to the KIT, the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And and the KIT is one of Germany's nine excellent universities. And um, we are especially focusing on technology, um, yeah, uh, teaching and research and creating innovation in the field of uh, mobility, energy and digitalization. And here um, I am in the technology business school that is Hector School. And we also um, offer part-time English master programs. And we are very happy to welcome every year a nice amount of Indian participants participants joining us here in Germany or in the last year on a virtual basis to pursue their Master of Science. So let me give you maybe some interesting facts about the KIT. Um, well, Carl Benz, um, he was studying at the KIT, so one of the founders of the automobile was there. And also, for example, we had um, Heinrich Hertz, who discovered the electromagnetic waves here in Karlsruhe on the campus of the firma. Technical University Karlsruhe. The former CEO of Daimler, um, yeah, Dieter Zetsche, he was also a graduate um, of the KIT um, and also the founders of the um, SAP company have been pursuing their education here. Also, the first email in Germany was sent out by the KIT, um, and there we can really demonstrate a strong um, history in technology, and we are continuing with this work even up today. 
Um, the KIT um, was found um, yeah, in this uh, yeah, in this constitution as it has now a little bit more over 10 years ago as a governmental research institution and a technical university of Karlsruhe joined together. So now it is a university and research center with over 9,000 employees and most of them focus in research and development. And we transform this knowledge obtained there into our courses, into small classes to guarantee first-hand excellent knowledge. So I'm, I'm very uh, happy to be here and, and to give you this note and to be afterwards here into the live discussion. And um, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate this inspiring connection here today. Um, and um, again, I send out my best regards. Uh, uh, thank you so very much, ma'am, for your kind words. And uh, uh, we, are, we are encouraged that uh, the same reciprocation is from our side. Uh, uh, please uh, be careful in this uh, situation and uh, take care of yourself in a very good way. Okay, so um, uh, we also have the audience uh, seeing this live. And uh, uh, let, us, let us go ahead with the program now. Uh, I would request... Uh, Dr. R.S. Bawa, uh, who is, uh, uh, I don't know whether you know it or not, he is who's who of India as he is a pro-chancellor of Chandigarh University, uh, completed his PhD at the age of 23 years, that is the record time, and worked six years at uh, PAU Ludhiana. Uh, he was associate professor at GNDU Amritsar for eight years up to 1987 remained professor for 23 years up to 2010. For your information, uh, this GNDU Amritsar is five star rated university. Uh, he worked as a registrar of GNDU for record 13 years and GNDU syndicate cert, uh, appreciated services in various certificates for a record 10 times. So Baba sir, this, is, uh, this platform is now over to you. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, well, I, I feel uh, really privileged to be among uh, this illuminated uh, speakers today. Uh, let me say a couple of words about Chandigarh University. Uh, we are a private university, just eight years old. And uh, I have been the founder vice chancellor of Chandigarh University. Uh, and currently I am pro chancellor. We have a new vice chancellor. Chandigarh University is A plus accredited university. And uh, I'm sure we know that uh, there are less than 50 universities in the country out of 1,000, which are A-plus accredited at the moment. Uh, we have also been at just uh, university with best placements. In fact, last year, uh, two, uh, 691 companies came uh, for campus placement in a single year. Uh, and also, we are known for search and innovation. We have filed more than 900 Indian patents. And uh, in this category also, we are put uh, almost uh, among the top in our country. Well, we focus on uh, empowering and enabling students. Uh, that's uh, the job that we think we should be doing. And uh, that is what prepares the student for future. Uh, we have currently about 30,000 students from all Indian states, all 28 Indian states, all eight uh, UTs and 45 foreign countries. And uh, engineering is our forte. We have largest number of students in engineering, uh, especially in computer science. So by enabling and empowering, uh, I mean, we enable them uh, to be great learners. We enable them to de-learn and relearn and adapt to new technologies very quickly. Empowering them to work for any kind of conditions. Empowering also means that we take care of their physical quotient, we take care of their emotional quotient, and now even spiritual quotient. Because the times which are coming are going to be real tough. I mean, we can't escape this hard fact that uh, the, the professionals will have to have special trades. Apart from uh, making compulsory all the courses in innovations and inventions, in uh, excellent communication skills, soft skills, uh, aptitude, and also creating attitude. Uh, their attitude towards everything is going to be of great, immense value. So we at Chandigarh University are trying to uh, do all these things. And uh, our motto is to make a difference to 
professional in higher education. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot from all of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your kind words. Uh, next in line, we have got uh, Mr. Manu Sharma, again, who's who in the country because he is having one of the most dynamic career. He is a senior general manager and HR at Hero Electric. He has great experience in the automotive sector working on different senior level positions. And uh, obviously, he is uh, the person who is a go-to person in any, any of the situation uh, where somebody is in dilemma. He, he is a person who gives the right kind of advice. So, um, Manu sir, now this uh, platform is over to you. Please uh, go ahead. I thank you for the kind words. And trust me, it's me only in that photograph. <laughs> somebody else. So this is all COVID's doing. I have not changed actually. So thank you very much for your warm welcome. Uh, let me introduce myself uh, slightly bit more. My name is Manish Sharma, and I have been associated with electric mobility for the past fourteen years. So in India, electric mobility is about fourteen years. So uh, we have been there from the day one as it started, and uh, along with that, uh, along with that one part of aspect of uh, uh, the journey of electric mobility, learning, unlearning, relearning, understanding the situation, understanding the challenges, and going to the next phase. The the whole concept itself is such a disruptive concept that it is very difficult for people to first accept it as a possible solution to mobility and then gradually build it to that level where people are opening up to the electric mobility the way we any anybody would uh, you know envisage that electric mobility is the next best thing so it's the next thing that is going to uh, change the uh, uh, change this uh, mobility uh, scenario positively so uh, along with the uh, uh, along with the hr position that i manage with the uh, hero electric i am also director corporate affairs for uh, SNEV. so with that we get to know a lot about policy making uh, we have been working closely with vpio we have been working closely with dhi so we are the one who knock at their doors and tell them, please do something about electric mobility. It is a nascent industry. It requires a lot of support. So along with that, the topic of the day is, uh, is very apt uh, because uh, this is the industry which actually requires people who want to, specifically engineers who really want to, who should be joining and looking at it as a, a career opportunity because uh, innovation is something that we need in this industry because most of the electric mobility till now has actually based on has been really based on the imported importing products and technology we are at the cusp where india is ready and as uh, i'm quoting mr amitabh khan he said uh, we have given up our telephony telephones mobility mobile phone sorry to China, we have given up our, given our cars to Japan. This is something that we want to hold on to in India, the electric mobility. So the government wants the India to be a world leader, or as they put it in the terms of new government, Vishwaguru, in terms of electric mobility. So uh, I think I've taken three minutes. I would look. I look forward to all the questions, and I would love to meet, uh, love to be associated with whatever you guys are planning to do next as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. Uh, it was uh, rightly said by you that uh, we are going to be the Vishwa Guru for electrical mo electric mobility because there are a number of players who are actually putting in a whole lot of efforts to come up with the innovations and new things into electric mobility and make it affordable. People like you. Thank you so much. So, um, moving next, we have got uh, uh, another eminent personality who is... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Arindam Lahiri, 
needless to mention that he is again a top level person in in the country who is a chief executive officer of automotive skill development council india uh, in the short form we know it as asdc uh, prior to this he has held various senior level positions and responsibilities including chief academic officer executive director advisor to md education and skills he was responsible for various academic delivery operations and have specialities in a startup strategic planning human resources supply chain training and development business negotiations alliances and partnerships learning and development arindam sir sir welcome to welcome to this forum and uh, now the stage is over to you uh good afternoon to all of you once again and uh, thank you ashwini ji for those uh, kind words uh, i think this is what the digital world uh, does because uh, uh, you know you get picked up from various social media platforms about what you are trying to do <laughs> um so yeah i i think uh, you know this is uh, very well organized and uh, i'd especially like to thank mr vinod gupta and isi india team uh, for the uh, tremendous amount of work that they're doing in terms of uh, kind of promoting the whole concept of e mobility to the youngsters in this country uh, you know india is kind of uh, known as uh, uh, the best place for resources on uh information technology uh usually you know uh and i think one of the best things that the it industry had done is essentially popularizing this whole um you know career in it as a very liberating experience for the youngsters to go for um and at the auto industry level probably we haven't done enough uh i mean i come from an auto industry background uh, back then obviously nobody used to kind of glamorize any industry uh, but uh, after it telecom what they have done i think in addition to what manu ji has just mentioned about being the vishwa guru in e mobility i think we will need to be the most glamorous industry in this country for the younger profiles to actually get and come into this industry because it's the it's the human resources which is at the heart of development of any industry and skilled manpower uh is possible only when people actually come with the passion you can train for skills but you cannot train for that passion and that attitude you know so in order to build that passion and attitude let me tell you uh it is very important for us as an industry also to regularly talk to these youngsters who are in this very difficult situation uh where they are not even able to meet with their friends physically uh leave aside going to the institutions and it seems as if the world is coming to an end you know uh that kind of a feeling might come to some of them but let me tell you individually i am at my happiest best if i may use these kind of english which may not be very grammatically correct but i am in my happiest best because i know that if we are at this difficult situation the future can only be brighter and better i am actually more, much more worried as a person when things are very rosy and you know we're going very gaga because i always think something's lurking in the corner and we might face something which is for which we are not prepared but i am very happy at this point in time because we are going through a very very difficult phase all of us and they, to the youngsters i must tell you in my experience i have always seen that life is like a cycle so anything that you explain in physical laws for instance you will talk about cycles you know this curve that curve uh, whether it's a smooth curve whether it is a step curve there are cycles and life is also about cycles so if there is a bad uh, period the only thing that can happen is a much better period and a brighter period so utilize this time to build your strength build your mental strength develop a passion develop a skill and you would be ready to face the world when the world turns up much better. 
bright, better, brighter and a better place. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, uh, because uh, in the audience, we have got a number of students who are watching and uh, you have gone to their heart because you have taken that point, how they are doing. So that's, uh, that's so ni nice words. And uh, uh, it's, it's like of uh, uh, in this situation, how they are doing, nobody, nobody knows about it because uh, we, we think that uh, youngsters are okay with this. But uh, we should understand their pain points also. Anyway, so uh, now we would like to uh, welcome our. Is uh, mena uh, mujhe jaise process hai na ki kahan pe ja ke karega? Hello. So yeah. So uh, now I would like to call upon or welcome rather uh, our uh, one of the most senior and uh, associated uh, uh, partner for uh, ISI. Uh, he is. Uh, Mr. Jawaji Muni Ratnam, uh, again, a very eminent personality. He is a chair of engineering education board uh, in SAE and founder and director, SAE that is uh, uh, aerospace and founder and director, uh, Jawaji M Consulting Private Limited. He has a strong catch in international business dealings, uh, creation of efficient business plans, processes, project execu execution teams, et cetera. And he has got ability to enter and expand new in a new uh, market environment. Uh, he is uh, one of the most eminent personality uh, in the country, uh, worked with so many organizations and uh, he's directly connected to the students from the SAE India Aerospace Board. So sir, uh, welcome and uh, next three minutes are for you. Please take it over. Thank you, Shamaji. It's always a pleasure to see you and uh, talk to you. And uh, thanks for the excellent opportunity to you and to Dr. Um, I mean, Mr. Vinod Gupta. And uh, happy to share the dais with um, excellent eminent, eminent personalities. Okay, um, because uh, there is a positive time, I'll just briefly tell uh, a few words and also share a brief presentation to uh, the, the students. Uh, just to share an interesting uh, information with all of you that um, I have been driving or we have been having uh, electric uh, vehicle in my family for the last, uh, I would say, 15 years. It's more out of a passion than anything. And um, even today, it works very well. I mean, in fact, we have a couple of them. Outstandingly works well. Uh, in my previous organization, where I was heading a large uh, international consulting company, in order to encourage... Uh, electric mobility, we sponsored uh, the energy cost to the employees. Of course, few takers, but we actually sponsored whatever that uh, power cost of their electric vehicles we sponsored that, that we've encouraged. And as part of my journey with SAE, we have uh, and a couple of other uh, associations, we have conceptualized various uh, electric vehicle development programs. Okay. So uh, coming back to this uh, specific topic of um, what is in future for the and students now, and uh, what is the impact of uh, COVID pandemic in the coming years in terms of their employability. I just would like to share a brief presentation, what I prepared, so I'd like to go through that. Uh, do you see that, uh, all of you? Yes, sir, it is visible. Yeah. Okay, great. So basically the, the topic is about post-COVID opportunities and challenges in engineering field. Briefly, a uh, few points about what are experts uh, thinking uh, globally about uh, job opportunities, future predict predictions, and what's going to happen going forward, and what is beauty of the future. In fact, I uh, appreciate what Mr. Lahiri said, you know, that uh, outstanding enthusiasm of the future. I echo the same feelings. And what are the skill requirements? One case study, I wouldn't call it actually case study, but I would like to present to you, I mean, basically for the students, how we've evolved in this engineering journey. Okay, if you look at here, uh, I need to switch off this. Okay, there's been a study by World Economic Forum in terms of you know, jobs, what are the future jobs in the last couple of months. They feel that 44% uh, of the workers are able to work remotely during the COVID crisis. When you say 44%, it's prominently the white collar workers, maybe some of the blue collar workers as well, but it, 
like some of our speakers said that, you know, we always rise to the occasion. So we de demonstrated that we can actually work differently and the students did not worry that, okay, where is, where is going to be my work spot? Will I get a job, etc. Okay. The next uh, interesting outcome of this study is companies are providing opportunities to work remotely. That means the companies will be more global and global. There's about 76%. And companies are investing or started utilizing whole digitalization work process, which means what was done manually, what was done semi-manually are all being digitized these days, which is an interesting fact, especially for uh, students from India, because, you know, by nature, we are fairly good at uh, IT activities and we have to in kind of bring it together with the other activities. That's why I think we will have a great opportunity and the companies are accel accelerating automate automation of the tasks. And of course, temporary reduction of workforce is a temporary and companies are really looking at the the structure of the company so that there is a better utilization of the processes and procedures. This is a study done by McKinsey and Company. Uh, this is a too much of data is that I hope it is visible to most of the students. If some of them are using their mobile phones, sorry, I can't help it, but uh, sure you can make it out. Basically, they have studied a uh, couple of countries' uh, current uh, employment uh, status and what is going to be featured in the next 10 years. Let me focus more on the India. And if you look at the India, it is all blue and positive. And there is one or two blocks which are different in color that is towards a black color. I'll explain to you that. If you look at India here, they say that in the next 10 years, more and more job opportunities are for the health age, techs and care workers, which means it is not just the doctors, but also engineers who are going to work in hospitals then various you know, health related activities. Then comes the STEM professionals, then the managers. Why we are talking about managers now? Because in the next 10 years, like almost everybody shared uh, that attitude and aptitude is going to be thing. I think that is very important to become a manager. Then comes the transportation services. Here we are not just talking about the design of the vehicles and you know, manufacturing the vehicles, but a whole logistic that is how do you help passengers to move from A to B or goods from A to B. So we'll all get involved. The students will have the great opportunity and because as you all know that it is increasing. Then comes the, the training and the academic side. This comes the mechanical station repair. So here is very important, though it is black in color, I've highlighted here. They say that number of physical job opportunities are going to be less in agriculture in India. That is because more and more automation to, will take place. Because it has to take place, I think, I strongly believe that Indian engineers will have great opportunity. For example, I was watching uh, an electric uh, tractor so probably everything will be completely electric in the next 10, 15 years. And I think students have to really take it forward. And uh, again, most of uh, the panelists have spoken about uh, self-management, the attitude and all that. So here it's again, critical thinking, analysis, problem solving, self-management, work with people, management, communication activities, technology and development, correlators, physical policy. You see, a lot of things are in the increasing side because if you're going to work remotely most of the time, that is what you have to be self-motivated employee. Okay, what is in store for future for uh, students? Most of us would be start working remotely like what is happening today in this conference that all of us are able to meet together about 3,500 people are able to talk to each other virtually today. Similarly, it'll happen in office and hybrid approach will happen, which means that, you know, you'll have offices closer to your home and something you visit, something you don't, but work will continue to happen. Safety will become the topmost priority. No compromise in safety. In fact, there'll be more and more regulations will come into the workplaces. Gender equality. 
because people can work from home and the office, more and more women employees will become part of our activities. That's good to know. I mean, second thing is, we are talking about education, training, etc. The days of you know the large campuses of training will go away. People will be trained. People will have their internship virtually. I feel beauty of the future will have that uh, work-life balance will be far better. You'll have right job for the right person. And if you're going to work in offices, you'll have a fantastic offices for you. And most of the time you may be traveling short distances because you'll have a distributed offices. And very importantly, it is a cost saving for you and cost saving for the companies. And I feel, uh, especially for this uh, electric mobility skill development, I think students will have to focus on these areas like augmented realities, virtual reality, haptic design, 3D printing, IoT, A and ML. You've got to embrace these new technologies and we are very confident and bullish that Indian engineers can really quickly pick it up. And uh, just thought it, it's not actually case study, but I just wanted to share this slide with the students. Remember 35 years back, we had uh, design offices where people used to use drafters and a lot of interaction. Then it became fairly digital. If you look at the bottom left side, um, when I had the opportunity to work on this specific uh, software called Katia about 30 years back, now you are actually designing and testing the equipment virtually in offices, but it's going to happen from your homes. And the last, we should not be concerned about the future, but the best way to predict the future is to create it. That's what the famous uh, marketing guru, Peter Drucker said. With this, I end, and uh, of course, we'll join because there is a positive plan. Thank you so much, uh, Inerji and uh, Shirmaji. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. The best way to predict the future is to create it. That's, that's one of the most beautiful lines you have shown to us. And that is very positive, uh, positive in nature, because uh, in these times, these kind of words boost your morale like anything. Uh, so nice uh, presentation, sir. And uh, especially the drafter thing, what you have mentioned, because mm -hmm. we use those drafters 20, 25 years back. Yeah, exactly, yes. and <laughs> now the students may be using that. But yes. uh, it has it has gone through with the, when when uh, it has it has just uh, I gone through with the times when I used to be in the age of eighteen or nineteen years old and we used to use the drafter so so yes. nice that you have shown that pick so uh, <clears throat> now let's let's uh, open the forum sir uh, to to the questions and uh, I I will be asking some of the questions for, on behalf of the students. Uh, to to the concerned people, uh, the first question, the first question here is, uh, what are the challenges for the students? And uh, that has come for uh, Mani Ratnam sir. Uh, what are the challenges for the students in these times, and how we can overcome this into opportunities? Uh, this is the question, sir. Okay. Um, in fact, we have other panel, but I'll quickly finish. Um... Like um, Mr. Lahiri and a couple of others shared, I think this is a fantastic time. You know, you will actually come with innovation when you're in the tough times. I think this is a fantastic opportunity for the students to learn digitally, interact digitally. You know, for example, when I'm working in an office, when my boss comes, based on his body language, I'll predict the mood of that person that specific day. Today, we don't have that opportunity. You have to predict the mood of your boss just digitally. You've got to develop such kind of skills. And similarly, what I feel is more and more digital technology exposure should happen this time so that when you're, you know, the world is open for us to experiment, I think uh, you, all of you will be wonderfully doing very well. And like we said, that EV is going to be the future. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. Yeah. So um, that's that's nice. Uh, there is another question which is uh, which is talking about how online education can fill the gap between industry and academia. Uh, any any panelist who would like to take this question. I'm repeating the question again. Yeah. Uh, how online education can fill the gap between industry and academia? Uh, okay. Yeah, yes, please. sir. 
please. Uh, I think uh, industry academia interface and uh, collaboration, I think has uh, since uh, industry 3.0, it has uh, been tried by many universities and uh, industries have also started feeling that they have to kind of intervene and they have to kind of play their role uh, to create those professionals which will be suitable to the industry on which they will not have to work uh, a lot. Uh, one way of doing uh, how this uh, present time and digital um, uh, opportunities can be utilized is that it's physically difficult for the industry and industry experts, especially technical experts. You know, HR experts, HR people do visit the universities for recruitment, but normally the technical team it's, it's very rare that their technical experts will be visiting the university. They can't find time. But now that we have these platforms, so we can utilize their expertise uh, through uh, some kind of uh, common interests, through interface. And uh, one model that we tried at our university, I would like to share, is that we created some um, opportunities and uh, infrastructure in collaboration with the industry. For example, we created IBM Software Lab for Emerging Technologies. We created XP Center of Excellence. Uh, we created Wipro Lab here, Mindra and Mindra Lab. So those labs are available. And this time, uh, the students can have access to their latest technologies and expertise and some kind of guidance on real-time projects, uh, which we can use. Uh, then, you know, the bottom line or the catch is that the universities or institutions will have to have state-of-the-art technology. I think the biggest challenge from student point of view and university point of view is to find out the right technology, number one. Number two, how to use that technology in an innovative way. So in, in the current time, you can utilize, you can create an interface with the industry also. Three things I normally say, number one, right technology, innovative use of that technology, and a lot of flexibility. Flexibility both with the industry, with the students, and with the faculty. So if you utilize that, I am sure it is going to create a kind of a uh, opportunity as uh, 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 I think Javraj has said. Uh, it is going to be this difficult time can be converted to an opportunity. But then the challenge is that the students sometimes do not have those kind of access to technology all over the country, you know, for example, we are facing that difficulty. So I think government has a great role to play in providing connectivity in far off places in a country like India. We have a lot of difficulties, but then I think this is how we can do that. Uh, we should have anticipated, not COVID, but anticipated the invasion of technology in education sector. And those who foresaw it, those who prepared themselves a little bit and we fortunately are one of them who were using blended learning right from 2012. Uh, we were using a lot of e-resources, a lot of online providing of material to these students all over. So I think this is my take on this. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we have got uh, next question uh, to Madam Martina. Uh, Ma'am, the question is, uh, what are the lesson learned or any positive takeaway from this situation, in this present situation? What are the lesson learned and any positive takeaway from the present situation? Yes, um, um, I think here I would like to mention two things. The, the one thing is, I think um, all of us, we have been forced to push digitaliz uh, digitalization. Um, I think before much more was, was in life, um, there were uh, less opportunities to work from home. Um, and I think many companies and many uh, persons have been surprised um, how well it went and how quickly we developed um, over this pandemic situation into launching uh, much more online formats uh, for teaching, for working, um, yeah, for meeting like we are having here today. So we all can interact uh, with each other 
harder. Um, and so there is a, um, yeah, the time can be spent much more valuable as there is less time used for commuting from one place to the other. So, so I would say um, this is a positive aspect. And then I think it um, also is um, that we have been uh, working on a straw, we have been forced to work on our re uh, resilience so that we can um, yeah, survive in this difficult situation. And, and maybe we can now appreciate more um, the small moments like um, having more time with your family, everybody eating together, not just on the weekends, but maybe sometimes even for a lunch. And, and when we see uh, when we can meet up the family again, um, uh, it, it is much more precious. So, um, so um, I think there will be again, um, yeah, this is valuable and our perspective has changed overall. But, uh, but still, I really have to say it is an extremely difficult situation, and especially for the young people where, where they are in an age where they want to go out and they want to meet and they want to interact and they want to see what their peers are doing. Um, and now um, to be more at home and with an uncertain perspective of the future, it makes it very hard. And I, and I can really say, believe into yourself, um, have a structure uh, in your day um, and, and make there also moments that you really enjoy. And before, work hard on yourself and whatever needs to get done, but then also have this time for yourself um, where you do what you like. But really maintain strong and keep a good schedule and it will go over and you will and you are stronger than than what you're thinking right now yeah perfect perfect so we have to be mentally strong in this situation and then comes the innovation part of it uh, fine uh, this question goes to manu sharma ji as uh, ev sector is one of the booming domain where according to survey 5 million jobs will be available for students how educational institutes, in your opinion, how these institutes can grab this opportunity? That's the question. Okay. So, I don't know from this where this number came up, 5 million jobs. <laughs> uh, but I wish and I really hope and pray that this actually happens, the industry goes to that level. So, what happens is most of the time when people start making these studies and books, they arrive on a number, then they reverse engineer. So the Booz and company came up with a number uh, in frame one that uh, there will be six, uh, 600,000 vehicles before 2020, right? Annually, right? So usually they arrive on a number, then they reverse engineer. The reality and the fact of the matter, which has to be seen, and as we see, each and every day. Yes, it is difficult. It is not easy. And what Martina says is absolutely correct. That uh, we are still, um, perhaps Martina can say that we are getting out of it. Uh, we are still in it. We are still in a situation where we need to see what is going to happen next. So as far as job creation is concerned, yes, it is a brilliant opportunity. Uh, now, when it comes to brilliant opportunity, what kind of jobs? What are we? What are we actually? Okay, there's an electric mobility. What should we start doing? First, understand. Uh, I'm talking to the students. The innovation, the change, the disruption is so big that it will actually change the whole dynamics. Like I said, for instance, there are about two thousand two hundred mo moving parts in an IC engine vehicle. Electric mobility has 22. Right. So, what is going to happen next? What is going to happen to the, those jobs? Okay, maybe there will be some changes in the whole dynamic. Uh, because definitely electric mobility does not require that many moving parts. So, the mechanical part is going to be reduced drastically. So, what is remaining? What is the differentiator? Between right now, we are at the at the level we have been sitting at at the top of the pyramid for what 13 years now. We are the industry leaders. But soon the competitions already started coming. The companies like Bajaj has already started venturing in. We have Aethers, we have new and new more companies are coming in. 
so the change point the competition uh, the the qualitative uh, battle is about to start where a pe- where people were going to ask which electric mobility is better and the differentiator is not going to be i can go up to 150 km or 70 km or 40 km or 50 km in an hour if they want that they can always go for a nice engine the faster the electric mobility is all about efficiency how efficient is your vehicle people are no mo- moving towards electric mobility now not because of uh, it is glamorous they are moving towards electric mobility because it is practical and it is efficient so keeping those two words in mind the electric mobility product the differentiator is going to be the iot the software side of the vehicle the ai and that is where the catch is that is where we need those innovators this we need those people who can work on it secondly we don't know we don't have we don't own any lithium ion we don't know what is going to happen in battery technology we are just packing batteries nobody is actually manufacturing batteries in india all the batteries coming from china actually chile has some uh, you know uh, mines that has uh, got lithium but that's that's not going to solve our problem because manufacturing requires manufacturing il- batteries for electric mobility requires that kind of scale so if you ask people are they ready to invest in this industry right now and put their money where the mouth is okay let's build a you know plant for 10 lakh batteries uh, in a year so some of the companies are doing it are planning it but they are very cautious So battery technology is a huge thing right motor technology is going to be next thing so as we go along but having said that the only again i'm reiterating the mechanical part is going to be reduced it is going to be limited to servicing the vehicle i was talking to arindam the other day about something that i was thinking of how to actually get the youth connected with this the servicing of this vehicle now there is no service there is no service in electric mobility there is no oil change happening there is no wear and tear the only thing that you may need to change is tires or battery if the technology gets better so usually in india people are giving 3 year warranty on lithium ion batteries so it becomes 5 years the uh, tata is giving on their battery uh, the, the electric car 8 years warranty yeah right the difference again the differentiator is the technology the qualitative battle is going to be the next thing the design the aspect of how look and feel and the comfort the feel of the vehicle is going to be the next best thing and that's where we need the engineers i hope that answers the question i'm sorry for the long answer i usually take more time my yeah, that's, that's perfect sir that's perfect uh, uh we are quickly moving to next question uh, that is uh, uh to again rs baba sir uh effect of covid on education sector and how we can maintain the quality of online education Sir, your take. I think I have partly answered this question yeah. earlier, because yeah. uh, what what is you know again online education means what online education has three components. One is uh, the delivery mechanism. Uh, the second is the technology available to the recipient, the student, and the third one, which I didn't cover earlier, uh, is the uh, I think preparation uh, by the faculty. So training of the faculty. uh normally the teachers are not trained uh, for this kind of teaching or this kind of delivery of uh, the content because classroom is something different where 
they have the time they can uh, actually interact with the student they can know whether the student is receiving or they are uh, actually serious or they are not serious so and uh, also i think uh, classroom can be more interactive so to make this uh, biggest challenge will be i think in online that the students remain focused uh, that is because in fact that challenge remain even in the classroom uh, <laughs> and you know what some surveys which were done with the students if the best student they said given a choice uh, uh, of not going to the class how many of you will go to the class so only 20% said will go to the class 80% would not like to go to the class this is a general and it's a hard fact so in a way in a way this is a blessing in disguise the students who already were wanting a blended learning model uh, as i said earlier we have been trying it right from the beginning but not allowing student to miss the classes that much but now i think it's it's compulsory we don't have a choice we have to allow the students uh, to study from home so what is required is that this teacher will have to be uh, more prepared they will have to fascinate the mind of the student they will have to create that kind of content which interest the students and uh, again you know uh, this is a common fact that to keep the student concentrated for more than 15 20 minutes 25 minutes it varies from person to person different studies say something but in any case not more than 40 minutes so if you want to keep the student focus so you will have to take a break somewhere after 20 minutes 25 minutes bring in something which is interesting involve the students and we have to acquire technologies i mean i know many people have acquired different technologies i am happy to share that we as a university acquired blackboard uh, which we found very interactive where the students can not only ask questions they can write whatever is required to be uh, told to the teacher and all those kind of things so i think as i said earlier i will come back to the same thing those three things will be important right challenges, challenges technology challenges preparing the teacher challenges making the content available to the student through better connectivity which i think universities can't do this i think is a job of the government which the government i'm sure must be doing uh, in yes. a number of ways but as far as the university is concerned even with the best of technology you will have to innovate teachers will have to innovate on a regular basis uh, nothing can be used in the same thing you use today you also use the same thing tomorrow same example yeah. year after year after year which used to be done in the classroom teaching that will not be valid here right teachers teachers will have to come out with innovative examples uh, the catch word is to keep the students mind fascinated to fascinate them with something which makes it interesting and the students keep focus there and also give them some innovative exercises not the uh, rat of the mill you know uh, taking it from the internet or where you give them standard statements okay write a, an assignment on this you know this is the major difference between our kind of system was being followed at some of the best universities uh, which is being followed so this is to my mind uh, the challenge and the solution also but ultimately the solution lies in the hands of the teachers as much as the technology and flexibility flexibility thank you so much perfect sir perfect sir yeah, on a on a lighter note uh, yeah. <laughs> i feel sorry for the students they can't bunk classes any <laughs> but uh, sir, <laughs> on the on the other side of it manu sir uh, what uh, rs baba sir has told now there is a shift in thinking of the students because they are there into this lockdown and uh, these people now really means the people who did not want to attend the classes they also really come to the campus to attend the classes and every day they are we are getting number of phone calls sir when the college will open so this yeah. is a positive thing which i can say that has happened with the entire uh, teaching and uh, institutional community again that so, shama in a lighter vein <laughs> they they want to come to the campus not necessarily for going to the campus <laughs> <laughs> so they, what they are missing is what they are missing is this Social. atmosphere what they are missing is meeting their yeah uh, that is what actually right. the so, university is ecology is actually i think each one of us is missing that social life in yeah. one form or the other but yeah. now, having, I said that, father, having said that yeah, having said that uh, the new generation new generation i think we have been missing on that and i take it a, 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 of course uh, uh, it should not have come through these unfortunate situation 
But I think we needed to change our technology and our approach to education. To yeah. meet the aspirations, to meet the aspirations of the 21st century student, all these things were required. Uh, we will have to be more flexible. Even if a student is on the campus, we may not force him to come to the class. Yeah, of course, right. we'll force him to attend, maybe sitting in the uh, uh, garden or sitting in the hostel or whatever. So something is going to be changed forever. And yes, that sir. is going to be normal. So that, right. that we are pretty sure and we are planning accordingly. Yeah, that's right. I am the father of 13-year-old son and I really hope and pray that schools start open for him. Yes. Start open, you know, opening for him because it's been one and a half year. He's been looking real, at screens, which is not healthy for for not for healthy, youngsters. Not healthy at all. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for interruption. No, that's okay, sir. That's, that's completely okay. Yeah. So um, quickly taking another question that is uh, to Madam Martina. Uh, in present situation, the students are going through, yeah, it is in line with the last question only or the answer only. In present situation, the students are going through mental stress and uncertainties. What is your recommendation for them to be positive and motivated? Yes, um, it is a very stressful situation and I think um, you should uh, watch on your daily routine that there is always time for a small exercise, um, uh, that you can do some stretching uh, and some movements and maybe some yoga. Like I really like to do this. I have to say I feel much better if I keep this on a daily schedule. And of course, uh, yeah, watch what you are eating, uh, making sure you're drinking enough fluids. Um, and then um, maybe also uh, use the time to to like um, connect you with people you maybe have not talked in a long time ago. Um, yeah, uh, pick up your phone and call them. So this may may be a distant relative or this may be a friend you have lost uh, track of, but really um, use the plus on time you have now to reactivate uh, your network. Right. Also, please feel free to get connected with me, um, uh, for example, um, on LinkedIn. So it's always nice to have a few on other people as it takes you out for a short minute uh, of the daily routine. Yeah, that's, that's, that's I take perfect. A, a, a yes, sir. Can I take yes, sir. Actually, uh, I'll just supplement what uh, ma'am um, has said. You know, what I believe is that the biggest challenge for the student is that when they come to the campus, they have fixed time for coming to the campus, then they have that timetable, then, you know, they have some homework, they will do all that kind of thing. When they are at home, they don't plan anything. Very rightly said, they must plan uh, something for uh, some time for their exercise, some time for pranayam or yoga or whatever. But most important is that they must take their food on time. Uh, they must prepare a timetable for the whole day. Why I'm saying so, you know, especially this is especially for those students who are in their qualifying classes where after plus two, they'll be going to the college or those who are in the college, they'll be going to uh, say their master's degree or they'll be going to their doctoral degree. So I think what is required is that they must fix all these things uh, and also keep in touch with their friends, with their relatives. And as far as possible, as far as possible, keep some time for refreshing themselves and entertainment, what, whatever kind of thing. And I think parents should help them out. Thanks yeah, so perfect. much. Perfect, sir. Perfect. Uh, okay, so the next question goes to Arindam Lahiri Saab. What are the different domains in good demand for students' skill development and their career? In addition, how they can be ready for these opportunities post-COVID, means after the pandemic is over? So I'm repeating the question again. What are the different domains in good demand for the students' skill development and their career? Sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very, uh, you know, common question that uh, has been there for ages, uh, especially if people wanting to do engineering, which domain should I go? Uh, in skills, which domain should I go? Uh, I... I have had a simple answer and I'll continue to say the same thing. Uh, if you find something very interesting, go for it. Every domain is important because you need people for from every domain. But whether that domain is fit for you uh, is important for you to find out because otherwise that domain will throw you out of that domain. I started as a mechanical engineer. Not that I was a very bad mechanical engineer, but my passion was in education. 
So eventually, when I actually started off on my own in terms of uh, you know starting an education company, those days it wasn't a fashion to call it as a startup. It used to be called as a every domain is uh, starting a business. You need people for from every domain. Yeah, <laughs> whether that domain is fit for you uh, is important for you to find out because otherwise that domain will throw you out of that domain. I started as a mechanical engineer. Not that I was a very bad mechanical engineer, but my passion was in education. So eventually, when I actually started off on my own, okay, I don't know. Probably some recording was going on. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So that. coming back to that, uh, you know, so I I would only advise that uh, it is important for you to have some interest in what you are doing. If you have an interest, that domain will be fantastic for you. the industry needs people from all domains but they need the they need the best resources for each and every domain uh if you want to be valued in in the industry then you must be the best in it there is no other option so i remember you know i worked for a uh, for a quite a few period uh, <clears throat> uh with uh, a light signal uh, you know and uh, one of the principles that we had at that point in time For the different business units, that if you are globally in the world not the number one or the number two in the market, then you should exit that business. Uh, so that is all that we used to get evaluated on, and I think uh, it made a lot of sense that on a personal life as well or a professional life as well, you need to be doing things which you are best at. Otherwise, it will lead to a lot of frustration, a lot of depression, uh, a lot of confusion. Uh, at your end and uh, people around you who will have this kind of a challenge just one more thing i want to add and uh, you know just uh, talking about some of the discussions that uh, i think uh, dr bawa and uh, you and uh, martina have all been talking about uh, you know one of the areas that i think educational institutions uh, and and three of you are there from the educational institution directly uh, you know we must look at you know uh, when when we graduated from iim for instance uh, you know there used to be still be news about a 100% placement average salary so much uh, you know peak salary so much this that i am slightly still pained that we still keep talking about uh, a lot of placement issues in the indian context definitely uh, that so many jobs have been given from campus uh, you know so many people have been placed so many companies have come i think we must start changing that matrix to uh, you know so many people have started becoming job creators and between them they have started giving so many jobs and that number i can want i can tell you will be much more than the number of students that you actually graduate because they will be having a multiplier effect and on the e mobility side let me tell you it has opened up in the automotive industry it was very difficult to become a startup you know in today's language or you want to become an entrepreneur it used to be very challenging but with an e mobility kind of a domain uh, and the newer technologies let's say industry 4.0 where you are uh, talking about a lot of cyber physical systems uh, you know automating various processes i tell students one thing very simply put if find a way to automate a process if you cannot find a a process to be automated the automation done for that process will throw you out of your job <laughs> so you have the choice whether you can automate a process and you can lead that industry or you get thrown out of the industry because somebody else has automated your job absolutely or your role and you are out of the industry that's right the choice of becoming a leader in the industry is yours and that's a direction that you need to take uh, right right sir thank you so much and uh, we have got uh, the last question here from i think one of the final year student he has asked it to manu sharma sir so the question is uh, how the final year students can apply in ev sector and what opportunities are there in hello ji ji yeah 
these are two two questions in the same how the final year students can apply in ev sector and what opportunities are there in e vehicle sector for students for mechanical engineering one is starting a ev startup or doing work with rich recognized company your take sir okay all right so <laughs> i'll give you one id where you can actually apply and that's jobs at heroeco.com right okay so we encourage interns we encourage uh, young engineers we encourage innovation we encourage fertile minds as i like to call them they are the one who bring the best of the ideas to so send the cvs i can't say anything about the electric mobility as everybody is in a shell shock right now okay so everybody is just holding on to his whatever they have the reserves and uh, basically they are very cautiously trading so this may take some time uh, right, this may take some time to you know get into an active job but if your calling is electric mobility then it is electric mobility you will definitely find a way and uh, we will guide you will help you we we'll try to you know uh, stay connected with you and definitely we create uh, we are we are uh, we have not uh, you know stop hiring as of right now right so, and we have taken a pause but we continue to do that what was the second part what was the part second no, question second second point was uh, that uh, whether they should go for the startup or uh, they should work with a recognized company very good question <laughs> <laughs> so so for the startup if you want to understand the whole business of it uh because electric mobility is that uh, blind man and the elephant okay okay so i have said enough so people are grappling what is electric mobility so if you want to learn from the people who have learned electric mobility then yes there are company with uh with the r kind of business model if you really want to venture into new things because of course there are a lot of new things are happening in electric mobility and we need those people uh the aggregators uh people who have actually been uh, you know uh, uh, starting bike rating people who have been actually designing apps for people designing iots for people so there are a lot of people who are actually doing that and electric mobility i like i said not a tremendous amount of growth has happened that that, that we can start we will start talking about saturation no it is just started it is just started so 14 year ago the first electric two wheelers i mean two wheeler came to our office and i said what is this <laughs> what is this why why there is no uh, tail pipe here so from that onwards the learning mistakes unlearning working out things how what will work in india everything is not related we can't just import things here and start selling it in india you have to make it india proof bhi banana padta hai product that's right that's right that's so, the most important thing so india and people don't buy vehicles based on technology people buy vehicles because of perception that's, that's right so that's, perception. Take, yeah. that's right so that has okay. to be built sorry long answer again on high quality uh, that's fine sir yeah. good answer uh, this is the second last question we are going to close it down after uh, next question uh, the question is again on the same line uh, but it is for madam martina that what opportunities are there Uh, with the e vehicle sector for mechanical in european countries especially in germany ma'am over to you yeah so so what are the opportunities in the field of e mobility uh, in europe was this correct Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's yeah, right. yeah. Um, um, okay, so uh, we all see that the uh, mobility industry um, is facing um, a big change, and um, that um, the companies, the governments, everybody is moving moving 
forwards uh, a climate uh, neutrality. So this is the, the big goal uh, for the next decades. And the e-mobility is definitely um, one big factor for that. So um, that the um, amount of uh, fuel engines will, will be reduced more and more. And therefore, for the students, it is really essential um, yeah, to learn um, the um, yeah, the technologies in the aspect all about e-mobility. So it is, um, yeah, what other drive engines are posi uh, possible there? The field of high voltage um, is very important and we are doing there um, a lot of trainings. Um, and um, so I think they really need a complete um, whole perspective. Also, for example, on charging, on batteries, on fuel cells. So, so everything that can be integrated here and also see what um, yeah, uh, mobility structures are there. And they really depend on the region where you are um, and, um, and how will they be structured in the future. So, um, uh, so therefore, I think this is an amazingly uh, interesting field. Um, and I can say for sure, if they are focusing uh, to get trained here, they will have very exciting jobs, uh, a secure future, and, and will be well paid. Perfect, ma'am. Uh, there is uh, another question is uh, open to all that is what about financial support for a startup if we have a great idea in EV sector. So anyone who can take this question. Work on it. Actually, you know, uh, I just want to uh, compliment what uh, Professor Jarrah was saying that uh, we should encourage uh, entrepreneurship and startups and all that kind of things. And I want to bring to the notice of this student that uh, Government of India is giving technology business incubators uh, to some universities. And we are very fortunate. We have one of those DBIs which are given to 10 universities across the country. And the amount of uh, money that they spare is about 10 crores uh, for Martina. This is uh, about uh, 100 million Indian rupees. Uh, for the university, which can be used for startups, uh, the prototyping and all those kind of things. And we give our students up to 100,000 rupees for uh, startup. And I'm again happy to share that we already have more than 118. Uh, I think there, there might be a little more now um, uh, startups uh, by these students. And a couple of those are earning more than 50 lakhs per year. Uh, so uh, things are moving in that direction. And there is no dearth of uh, financial uh, support provided you are at the right place at the right time with the right people and you have an idea which you can prove. Uh, because normally, you know, uh, there are two uh, routes, I think. One is through patent. So if you can go in for patenting and you are granted a patent, then I think financial support is assured. Uh, somebody, some kind of venture capitalist or somebody will come there. Or if they have some those kind of ideas, uh, I will say that my university supports outside students also, or outside youth also, those who wish to uh, incubate an idea. Uh, so we try to help the student from idea to enterprise, uh, depending on the viability of the idea and how it is going to be useful and whether to what extent we can support it. Uh, otherwise, I think some industries, uh, some industrial houses, they also welcome these kind of ideas. And again, this aspect I want to share uh, as a university, we have uh, tie up with a number of industries and uh, we invite them on the campus. They, are, they have offered some of our students to help them. So I, I will not like to uh, give uh, exact names, which industries and which uh, innovations, uh, but we have been granted uh, 65 patents already uh, out of those 900 and uh, those students they are uh, reasonably uh, employing people also, uh, earning also. So the student should not feel discouraged. Uh, if required, they can contact also. I'll offer my services for this kind of thing. Wonderful. Yeah. That's, I would like to give a clarification, Ashwini ji. Sir. So please. it may have given uh, an uh, impression that mechanical uh, part of the engineering is not going to be employable in what I said. In electric mobility, which is not true. Uh, there's a lot of lots and lots of work 
starting from motor to magnets and so many so so many things that is still happening and require like i said it is almost like a green field so many things that is that are required to be done and innovation is the name of the game and for the, all the startups people who are actually thinking of uh, starting up yes this is the place we can start up electric mobility is the place we can actually venture and uh, we have been supporting uh, uh, incubation centers so definitely the, you can reach out to us and we'll definitely uh, uh, have a discussion with you. Actually, uh, I just want to make a general comment for all engineering graduates, all engineering graduates. Like, you know, there has been, and I'm uh, saying this on the uh, on the basis of my own experience in my university. Uh, you know, there has been a very uh, tight compartment, uh, compartmentalization in the uh, students and, you know, civil engineering people telling us we want core companies and core companies are coming mechanical engineering, like uh, he has said. They say that I'm not getting a core mechanical job or those kind of things. I think gone are those days. Uh, I'm sure even in the electrical vehicle uh, domain, there'll be a lot of uh, role of uh, programmers, uh, software, yes, then cyber, a lot. you know, cyber security, then AI. So I think what is required is that an engineer of today will not be a complete engineer if he or she is a reasonable programmer, if they know what is AI all about, if they know something about IoT, they know something about cloud. Uh, they know something about big data, depending on their own interest. I would not say that they can be expert in all these fields. Uh, but in my university, what we try to encourage is that each one of students, not apart from computer science, those who are in mechanical engineering or aerospace or whatever, they must have some area of related to programming, cloud, that means related to IT. So that, you know, uh, unless they do that, uh, your civil engineering is not going to be that. Automation is going to be the name of the game. Automation of almost everything. Very rightly said that you automate, otherwise somebody will automate and uh, you lose your job and you lose whatever you're doing. So my message to all engineering graduates, those who are working students, who are whatever are there, they must have a very strong grounding. Rather, I would use the word proficiency in some area of IT related to their own field because core mechanical, core civil, core uh, electrical, whatever is uh, out of date now. And they cannot think of yes, getting it wrong unless they are very good in all those areas. So thank you very yes, much. Sorry for thank you, sir. Okay, so we are, we are quickly going with the last question now. And this question comes from the faculty. And the uh, question is uh, to both uh, Jawaji, sir, and Manu, sir. Uh, Faculty is saying that, uh, okay, there are a number of things which are expected out of us, but uh, we need to be trained for something what we are preparing our students for. If it is e-vehicle or e-mobility, obviously, teachers should be trained first. They should be enabled. They should be guided first in a real practical way so that these people can deliver into the classroom the latest know-how. Right, sir? Uh, yes. the, the question from the faculty is that do do you do you have any initiative where faculty is being enabled like in terms of uh, faculty internships or maybe some other kind where the faculty is actually coming to you they are physically seeing the things understanding the things and then finally coming back and delivering the best way possible so that's the question sir Hello, sir Bully, sir. Yeah, please, you yeah, take it. Really. I'll, I'll my input. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. So basically, uh, the institutions have started developing uh, interest in electric mobility. Uh, there was time when you were actually thinking of that we need support, we need to train manpower for electric mobility. From starting from a scratch, that uh, very practical problems that uh, even if a garage owner, he doesn't know what to do with it. If somebody walks into, uh, walks into his workshop, he doesn't know that. And starting from there to engineers, to ITIs who are actually running the automobile industry and they are not recognized uh, the way they should have been. The, from ITIs to diploma holders and to engineering students, uh, 
so the teachers definitely we need those helps uh, we need them to actually uh, start building up the courses induct electric mobility as part of their courses uh, starting small to big and that's where the thing is now only problem right now is which is the problem common to all the electric mobility problem is the scale of operations as the scale grows and which is going to which is the right time now and the industry is going to boom for the various reasons which i do should not get into that right now we need to be prepared the academic the, the faculty definitely needs to be updated because tomorrow you will have people can we actually learn that so as far as industry experts are concerned we have been uh, training people we have been we have our own training cell that goes out and uh, trains people uh, which is very difficult actually the kind of uh, targets we have how many people we have to educate so first step is awareness about electric mobility then it comes to what is this new thing and how do we actually start the uh, acceptance and then it comes to yes we should do that so yeah uh, people are warming up astc uh, is doing wonderful job there yeah, they have already done it and uh, so on so forth there are a lot of industry coming and talking to us and we do we try to help them as much as we can obviously the time whatever the time permits so yes sorry for okay, no, 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 nice input uh, yeah, just from my side i'm very happy to hear that faculty actually feels that they need to get updated on a regular basis this is very heartening to know that uh, very important that you know unless as a faculty i am not having a deep knowledge of the subject i cannot teach i cannot encourage the students to participate it's a good approach um i know that uh, as part of the faculty development program uh, organizations like ari icat natri to conduct regular programs two day three day programs and they will also have an opportunity to visit those labs which will give you a very very practical experience i think we do have the platform these days i think we should get in touch with it and i'm sure even hdc can will be probably be able to support that as well and is very important i just wanted to touch upon one point a uh, couple of times you know we had this question uh, mechanical engineers wanted to know what they can do um, i come from aeronautical engineering but i just would like to share this uh, important feedback or industry experience that uh, mechanical engineers for the last 30 40 years have been the king of engineering branch you can see them in it banking ev name it aerospace i mean they are able to adapt to any new technology they are able to perform to their best i think they mechanical engineering students need not have that apprehension and fortunately i'm sure our dr bawa would agree with me fortunately these days the curriculum introduces multidisciplinary approach for example they are having ai ml and etc because and plus students are also very smart it's not a very focused like they they want a wider spectrum i think they did not have any apprehension that they will i mean i'm sure they will be able to fit into new new technologies very easily than the in the past yeah. these days uh, i just wanted to another touch upon one point that um, i'm sure um, except uh, probably from waldner the rest of the people know there is a company called byjus the fastest growing education company in india or probably in the world 2.5 2.5 mm-hmm. billion dollar is the valuation market cap and i'm sure they will be able to fit into new new technologies very easily than the yeah there's been some okay so what i wanted to tell you is that digital learning is going to be the norm and the way the digital content will be created imparted evaluated evaluated will be totally different in the coming years and it's not going to take 10 years just 2 3 years and yeah. imagine that the current kindergarten students when they go to fourth grade the way they study will be far different we cannot even imagine now yeah so then this is going to 
you know, perform in the education sector. I would call digital education sector. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's right, sir. That's right. And thank you for the answer. And uh, now I I I have uh, I'm declaring that this session all the questions are over. And uh, now we are free, so we are going to close it down. But before that, I would request the people from ISI to take it over. Thank you, Professor Sharma. Thank you so much. Wonderful host. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. For the As all, always, the, all the panelists, thank you so much. It's been a very it was pleasure listening to you, Dr. Baba. Uh, yeah, very educating uh, 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 event. And uh, I'm sure we are going to implement a lot of things that we've learned today here. Thank you for this inspiring session today and all the best. Thank you so much and be safe to all the students and all the participants and the delegates. So, uh, at the last, I would like to take your review uh, that uh, the way ISI is doing the things, uh, in your opinion, what is what is maybe two liner or something like that from your side? Uh, may I start? We have sir, hosted sure, the events of ISI, and uh, I can tell you it has motivated and inspired my students to, to an extent that we have a full center of working on EVs now on my, on my in my universe. That's good. Let's go to ISI. Yeah, I would like to share my feedback. Um, it's also partly answered to one of the questions. They wanted to know whether you should take a job or entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Gupta has demonstrated that, you know, I mean, I think he's created a new way or new path in terms of education and imparting education by partnering education institutions with the companies and experts. That's an entrepreneurship. So I think that he has, done demo he has demonstrated quite well along with his team members. And that's also partly answered to one of the question, should I start a company? Should I work for it? depends upon your aptitude and attitude and interest, passion. Yeah. So I think uh, this is the time when I should uh, thank you, the eminent personalities which are there on this forum platform. So I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all the experts for their inspiring words and depth of understanding and ability to present the subject in such an interesting way. I'm sure everyone is enriched by this session. I would like to thank all the participants for joining to this expert talk. And we hope that now you are aware of the future opportunities and challenges through this session. Uh, this is not the end of it. Uh, there are a number of other initiatives which are already being taken. And uh, we are coming up with a number of sessions into different, different challenging technologies uh, or thrust areas. And uh, there will be a number of uh, eminent speakers into that too. Uh, with this, uh, enriched by this session, I would like to thank all the participants for, uh, again, uh, there is a glitch. Fine. So uh, thank you so very much, Martina, ma'am. Uh, namaskar. It's, it's, it's from our side. Baba, sir. Bhot, bhot namaskar aapke liye. You have you have done a great job, Muniratnam sir. You you are you are always a kind of motivation. And Manu Sharma sir, uh, it's it's great to be with you. Thank you so very much. And we are enlightened. I'm I'm delighted to host you all. And maybe in future again we will come together. Thank you so very much, sir. And ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look to thank, you. thank you. God thank bless. you. Bye bye. 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 Stay bye. safe. Bye, sir. Thank <laughs> you.